Well, hey, it's me. Hi. <clears throat> oh my goodness. Haven't talked very much today. Hi, Angie. Good to see you. I just saw that you did your Monday Night Madness. I think I'm going to go watch it after this. I took a bit of a nap today for some reason. I slept really well last night, but decided to get up, wake up really super early, and that kind of hit me mid afternoon. So, nap time it was. <laughs> Cheers, everyone, to this fine. What are we on? The 27th of December. Wow. And you're here for Keeping It Real, where I just do random things. <laughs> I read stories. We draw. We try things out. I have to turn off my heater. Oh, I thought I was cold, but now I'm warm. <laughs> Oh my goodness, that's the way it is. Uh, so you get me pretty randomly real. I just, yeah, today was kind of a, uh, my Christmas tree next to my big TV. Oh yeah, um, I have, oh, there it is, it's on that side. Uh, yeah, and I, I bought some of those extra little uh, wine bottle lights because I have this guy. Oops, see if you can see it there. So, and you can get them, they have a fake cork and they have lights and you put it in and they come 10 sets to a thing and they have, a, so I stuffed two of them in there so it has an extra cork hanging um, for some fun. But then I wrapped a couple of them around there because they come, and then they sent me, when they bought it, it came with a whole bunch of batteries too. But, oh well, yeah, I thought that was a little bit of extra fun for a, for having a little Christmas tree. We're still having um, a white Christmas. It's not gotten above about 23, 24 today here. Um, I suppose my husband l went out today and um, hi Gloria. He took the packages up to Key Center to our going postal, <clears throat> which was the only place opened up there. Um, it has uh, been cold. There's lots of fair, still a lot of snow and then he got back earlier this afternoon and we just went outside a couple minutes before this and uh, his truck is covered again with snow. So it's been snowing on and off all day and it snowed in Maryland. <laughs> oh my goodness. You're in Maryland, right, Angie? I think so. We're in Maryland. I've only been to Maryland once and that was to... Uh, William and Mary College. My daughter was in fourth grade and the world jump rope tournament was held there and she was a world-class jump roper and we went there with the team. <clears throat> so but it was in the summer and it was hot. Anyway, and Gloria, you're nearby there too, aren't you? Uh, uh oh, yes, Hagerstown, Maryland. And Gloria, aren't you close by to Angie also? Hmm, may, I may have to figure out a, I, you know what? Fall colors are supposed to be gorgeous over there. Hmm, maybe next fall I'll have to make a trip up there and do fall colors. Ah, could stop there on my way back from Botswana. I'm going to Botswana in September if all still works out, but... Okay, propping up a leg underneath the table here. Oh. So, yeah, well, it's good to see you guys today. And I thought a lot about what to do with this um, um, <laughs> drawing activity. And I, I realized it's been a while since I've done it, but I thought, no, it's okay. I've done it, did it a lot with kids all the time, and it's just a fun, different thing. But I was trying to figure out what we would draw. <coughs> Or what I'm going to draw, and you guys can choose anything because you can follow along using um, an image or a picture or something. Yeah, I'm going to show different ways to do this, but I kind of um, didn't want to start without a story, of course. <laughs> and so, uh, it's first snow, an inch, yes, Glory's in Gettysburg. Okay, 
Gettysburg. I've been to Gettysburg once, Gloria. Uh, yeah, that when when the girls were there for um, in Maryland, and we went up to Gettysburg, it was um, it was a difficult place for me to to be. It's a uh, uh, you know being sensitive. It's whew, it holds a lot of <laughs> a lot in the air and in the soil around there. Uh, yeah, cool. All right. So I thought I would start. Um, we had dinner, went shopping. Yay. Yeah, I think that's what this does. You know, it is like we've been friends forever. It's pretty funny to see that. So I thought I would start. And since um, one of the pictures I might use today for drawing is of a bear, um, I thought I'd... I was looking for a book to just to read to have a, a fun get off started get going on a book and of course I came across yes I came across Goldilocks and the Three Bears retold and illustrated by one of your favorites Jan Brett yes the wonderful woman who did the Christmas Trolls and Wild Christmas Reindeer and uh, the Trouble with Trolls Owl and the Pussycat, Burly Oz the Bear, oh, a hundred others, The Mermaid, she's got hundreds of other books. But this one, Goldilocks and the Three Bears, um, is just a really beautiful, I, I kind of propped it up a little higher so that you could see a little better um, some of the details that she has in this one. The ferns, the edging, the whole story, um, the woodwork that she recreated around the edge. Just the whole story is just really, really, really beautiful. So, uh, hi Sammy, how are you? Good to have you here. Hey, I saw you on Luria's show this morning. And then I think, were you just on uh, Anna and Fulgens too? I thought I, I might have seen you there. I came in late on that one. But um, yeah, it's good to have you here. So we're going to do some drawing on the right side of the brain today, which is a, a technique. But before we do that, it's story time because we just might be drawing bears. Goldilocks and the Three Bears, retold by Jan Brett and illustrated. So let me get myself moved over and out of the way a little bit. There we go. Yeah. So you can see again what she does. One of the things that is a trademark that of of Jan's work is the extra story she tells in the edging. And you, you get to know her work in the details. It's a very stylized type of art. And it it's you can kind of like um like Armadillo Rodeo. You you could pick up any one of her books <clears throat> and have the uh, um, author and illustrator covered and you would know that she was the illustrator of the book. This little <laughs> imagination of what the Three Bears home might look like. I love this. I love how this kind of, if you look carefully on this, and it's been a long time since I'd noticed this, if you look the door here, you see there's a, a bear here holding the door open, but it also almost looks like a bear itself, the nose and the ears and stuff. So it's pretty cool. Once upon a time, there were three bears who lived in a house of their own in the wood. One of them was little, small wee bear, one was a middle-sized bear, and the other was a great, huge bear. They each had a bowl for their porridge, a little bowl for the little, small, wee bear, a middle-sized bowl for the middle-sized bear, and a great, huge bowl for the great, huge bear. And they each had a chair to sit in, a chair for the little, wee, small bear, a middle-sized bear for the middle-sized bear, a middle-sized chair for the middle-sized bear, 
and a great huge chair for the great huge bear. And they each had a bed to sleep in. A little bed for the little wee bear. A middle-sized bed for the middle-sized bear. And a great huge bed for the great huge bear. There's their bowls. Isn't that cool? And all the different animals along the top. And their beds over here. Even the details of the steps. One day after they made their porridge for breakfast and poured it into their porridge bowls, they walked out into the woods while the porridge was cooling. And while they were walking, a little girl named Goldilocks came to their house. First, she looked in the window, then she peeped in at the keyhole, and seeing no one was at home, she lifted the latch. The door opened before her, and in she went. How pleased Goldilocks was when she saw the steaming porridge on the table. The sweet smell of porridge with roasted nuts, honey, and berries filled the room. It was so tempting that Goldilocks set about helping herself. First, she tasted the porridge of the great huge bear, but it was just too hot. Then she tasted the porridge of the middle-sized bear, but it was too cold. And then she tried the porridge of the little small wee bear. And it was neither too hot nor too cold. It was just right. She liked it so much that she ate it all up. Then Goldilocks sat down in the chair of the great huge bear. <laughs> but it was too hard for her. Then she sat down in the chair of the middle-sized bear. It was too soft for her. And then she sat down in the chair of the little small wee bear. And this chair was neither too hard nor too soft, but just right. So Goldilocks seated herself in it. And there she sat until the bottom of the chair gave way. And down she came, plump, on the floor. Then Goldilocks went upstairs to the bedroom in which the three bears slept. First, she lay down on the bed of the great huge bear. Oh, but that was too high at the head for her. Next, she lay down upon the bed of the middle-sized bear, but that was too high at the foot for her. Then she lay down upon the bed of the little small wee bear, and it was neither too high nor too low. It was just right. So she covered herself up comfortably and fell fast asleep. Well, by the time, by this time, the three bears thought their porridge would be cool enough to eat. So they returned home for breakfast. Now Goldilocks had left the spoon of the great huge bear standing in the porridge. Somebody has been at my porridge, said the great huge bear in a great rough, gruff voice. And when the middle-sized bear looked at hers, she saw that the spoon was standing in it too. Somebody has been in my porridge, said the middle-sized bear in her middle voice. Then the little small wee bear looked at his bowl, and the spoon was in the porridge bowl, but the porridge was all gone. Somebody has been in my porridge and has eaten it all up, said the small little small wee bear in his little small wee voice. Upon this, the three bears, seeing that someone had entered their house and eaten up the small wee bears, breakfast began to look about them. Now, Goldilocks had not put the hard cushions straight when she rose from the chair of the great huge bear. <gasps> Somebody has been sitting in my chair, said the great huge bear in his great rough, rough voice. And Goldilocks had crumpled the soft cushion of the middle-sized bear. Oh, Somebody has been sitting in my chair, said the middle-sized bear in her middle voice. And you know what Goldilocks had done to the third chair. Somebody has been sitting in my chair and has sat the bottom right out of it, 
said the little small wee bear in his little small wee voice. Then the bears thought it was necessary that they should make a further search, so they went upstairs to their bedroom. Now Goldilocks had pulled the pillow of the great huge bear out of its place. Somebody has been lying in my bed, said the great huge bear in his great rough, gruff voice. And Goldilocks had pulled the cover of the middle-sized bear out of its place. Somebody has been lying in my bed, said the middle-sized bear in her middle voice. And then the little small wee bear came to look at his bed, and there was Goldilocks, sleeping peacefully, her long shiny braids spread across his pillow. The little small wee bear just stared at her for a moment and didn't say anything. But then he cried, Somebody has been lying in my bed, and here she is! Goldilocks had heard in her sleep the great rough gruff voice of the great huge bear and the middle voice of the middle sized bear, but it was only as if she had heard someone speaking in a dream. But when she heard the little small wee voice of the little small wee bear, it was so sharp and so shrill and so like her own that it awakened her at once. Up she started, and when she saw the three bears on one side of the bed, she tumbled herself off the other and ran to the window. Out Goldilocks jumped, and she ran away as fast as she could run, not looking behind her until she was very far away. And what happened to Goldilocks afterwards? No one can tell. But the three bears never saw anything more of her. I love the details of the clothing and the bear claws. She's just so accurate with the bears. I mean, having seen these guys up close and personal, she's so good with the bear, with the way their claws are and their toes and their ears. It's so good. I love these. Look at in the big strong bear holding up that. Isn't that cool? Uh, yeah, she does remind you of Heidi. That, I, are you, Gloria, the, the old Heidi book, the, the big one that's like um, probably a 9 by 11 or a, yeah, 12, 11 by 9 by 12 size book. And it's blue. I have that one. It's a picture book that I had as a young child. <clears throat> yeah, they're very accurate. Really, really accurate. So that's the story that I had for us. So today we're going to draw. And I couldn't find my drawing on the right side of the brain book. This is a book similar called Drawing with Children. And they did, they did have a little reference in here to the techniques and what this is all about. So when... Um, there's always some things about how kid being, kids being artists or natural artists or having this or this and that. There's always been, you know, art things about different art lessons. But um, there was this one section that it said, Adults who forget how to draw can relearn through demonstrated visual exercise techniques such as mirror imaging, copying other line drawings upside down, and drawing the edges of negative space. Children need to learn the drawing process also, but with visual exercises that are geared to their age level. Um, the secret to demonstrating is to show the general concepts of shape and leave the detail interpretation up to the individual child. And that's kind of what we're gonna do today because um, this is all about tricking in a way, it's tricking your brain. Now, I have pictures I went through. I was trying to figure out what to do. I was going through all kinds of things with my photographs. Because you could find photographs of what you wanted to draw and things. I thought about doing those bears. There's my three bears. That's Mama Bear and two of her cubbies. 
the koi, um, different kind of things. You could do it with just about anything, but I thought I'd start and demonstrate with a, a simpler kind of a line drawing that I found that was from a coloring book. Now, here's the trick to this. So we've got some, oh, I've also got a picture of Aldo. We might do another little bear. I have a coyote. I went and printed off some things that I'd had. Well, this, this we might do, could do this bear. This is my first bear I ever was fairly close to and saw when I was up in Alaska. I called it my first bear. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, wow, there it is. So I'm going to, let's do the line drawing because this is something you can practice with like books, practice with coloring pages from books. And the trick is what we're going to do is we're going to convince our brain. Oop, I also have Rory. We might do. Um, because if you look at an image of anything, I'll get all the over here on this. We were out of ink, so sorry for the blue picture. Um, I thought it was printing in black and white, and it's printing in cyan. <laughs> if you look at this and you go to draw this type of thing, your brain looks at it and says, okay, you need to draw an ear or a nose or a paw or an eye. And you have some preconceived notions in your brain of what an ear looks like and what a paw is or what those things, those things have, there he is, have labels that are already kind of ingrained in your mind of what they look like. The problem is, unless you can recreate that through drawing, you get frustrated. You can easily, kids can get frustrated, adults get frustrated and say, I can't draw because I can't make it look like what my brain says an ear should look like. So we're going to remove those labels from your brain. And we're gonna do that by taking the image that we want to practice with and turning it upside down. And then I'm going to hide it. I'm actually not going to, I'm going to hide it under a couple pieces of paper because I do not want to trace it. Okay. All right. So you see what I've got there. I have taken the picture, turned it upside down, and I have just a bit of it sticking out. And that's what I'm going to start with. And with little kids, you even start with tiny little bits. Just tiny little bits showing. And then the whole idea is to, can you recreate that shape? And do what you have there, this kind of angle type thing with these two little angle things there. And then you just extend that out a little bit more. And I'm going to bring this up. And that has a little dip in there. I'm going to do that little dip. And then you see there's some new stuff that got added there. I got past that dip. I'm coming up over here. I'm going to go this way here. And, and then this has some new stuff added to it. So I'm just going to try to match these lines. And yes, it's not an original drawing. But what it does is it helps me in my own way of the, that I could not replicate something if I if I want to practice and want to expand and open up things. So um, you keep going and you bring it down a little further and let's see how we're doing here. I'm going to come this way. I'll come here up a blaze and I'm going to come out here on this one. And then I've got 
There. Let's see. I've got a thing here. I think I've come across around here, and I've got something that comes down there. I've got this coming up here. I think I've got a whole nother part over here I kind of forgot about. Okay. And sometimes when you're working with little kids, you have to encourage them not to erase, but I actually don't mind so much as long as they're, you know, still giving it a whirl. Okay, now I'm at a spot where things are starting to add on. So I'm going to watch for where things meet. I've got a meeting there. I've got something that comes up and starts to go up here, but has a meeting here. And then this has a little something there. And then there's this that way. And over here I have another kind of yeah all right let's see how we're doing here okay I've got up there and then I'm gonna go out here Got this part, got a little bit, oh well, it's close enough. There, 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 there. I want to try to get so that all my lines are coming to the same spot, whether they're exactly right in proportion. I've never done this particular animal before of this this bear this outline I had a bunch of drawings that I, I would use with the kids and we would start with this and we would do this each week um, and every time they came to the library um, they came to the library twice a once a week once a week twice a week once a week and then we would I would have these sessions going on they could continue to do them at different times and we would work at it okay now let's see how I'm doing. Um, this, this exercise makes so much sense. Yes, it really does. Um, it it really does make because you know I'm I'm looking really at just space and shape and like um, I'm. Looking where this one's got to come out here a little ways. And I'm looking at the angles rather than at what they might be. Now my, my brain is starting to say, oh, maybe that's this or maybe that's that. But I try to not study the image too much ahead of time so that I don't... Um, don't start to make those preconceived notions. Um, are you trying it? So you could try this. So I'm going to see. And so this one for me, I it, ha it meant to come in about the same spot there. So I'm going to bring it in here and then I'm going to bulge it out. It didn't have quite enough of a bulge. So I'm just going to bulge it out a little bit because it's a bulge or it's an angle it's not a thing yet that I know what it is. So is. I'm going to pull this out a little bit more to there. The trick is too to not pull things out too much. And when I did this with little kids, the, um, I had certain ones that I would build up to. Um, 
So the kindergartners, <laughs> believe it or not, yes, I did this with kindergarten and they could do it. Um, let's see, that's, hold it, that's, that's a different line. I've got my lines mixed up here. This one goes to this one. This one's out to here. That's this line right here. And the kindergartners would do it. And what I would do with the kindergartners is I was doing it as I, I was coming up. I would have um, different colored sections that I would be doing this on a big like whiteboard up ahead, of, up in front. And they would be kind of copying me. And so they would know where I was. I would trace over it in color so they would know where I was so we wouldn't get lost so much. Um, but here I got lost. That's too much of a bulge there. So that one comes up here like that. And then it goes like this and then it goes like that. Okay. And that's there and that's there. Okay. And then this is that right here. I'm talking to myself. This comes out here. And then there's this other little thing that's right out here. I'm starting to see. And from here, there's something that goes like this, sort of. I think that might be too much, but I'm going to see what I've got. Okay. Okay, so then this connects here and comes, starts to come there. There's this little something or other right here that's in there. There's a curve with a jagged in it, like that. And then there's another curve that comes up and goes like this. This line is basically done and this one is coming up a little bit more. Okay. Now. Let's see, where was I? I had that a little bit over there. That's this little. Okay. That's what I did there. So that is bum bum. I'm gonna pull it right out to there. To that, that. This is kind of like there. See what's here? It's got kind of colored in with a white spot there. Okay, and in here we go up, up, this comes up, up, this keeps coming up, let's see what do we do now, oops, and then this comes around the top here, at an angle there, And this is where you really have to tell yourself, I'm just looking at shapes. I'm not going to decide I know what that is. Kids start to get really excited. Sometimes I wouldn't let them see what the animal was ahead of time so they couldn't make a decision like that. So they would start to get excited and start to guess. <laughs> You're not rotten. <laughs> oh yeah, the adult coloring books are so awesome for this. They really are. I just Googled um, printable line drawings and um, came up with this one. And then it had printable coloring pages. So, okay, so now come up a little bit further. And okay, I'm gonna come up over here. And there is, that was a little bit of This is right here. Goes ch -ch -ch -ch. And then that's supposed to be right about there. Yeah, oh, I didn't have this lined up. I didn't pay attention to that line to this line. Sometimes you do that. And as you get better with this, you can start to pay attention to those kind of line things. Yes. 
Oops, too much. It's gonna be okay. There's that. Then there's this starting right there. This comes up here. This starts to curve. Curve up there, up there. What have we got here? Got nothing. That's this right here. And then this comes up up the four up like this. I started to call it a forehead. Not supposed to do that, but catch myself. Oh, and then I need this to go around like that. And there. And there's just something in that. I started to wonder, what is that? And then caught myself. No, you're not supposed to wonder what that is. You're just supposed to do it. I think part of experiencing your art or enhancing your art is letting go of those preconceived, what are you supposed to do? Oh, I just saw it in the, <laughs> I looked on, the, on my screen. It looks pretty cool. <laughs> yes, that would be really, really cool thing to do. Very cool. Okay. There's that. Let's bring this around there. How much further? Come on. What else do I have to do? I have this. Let's see. That's that. There. And then scoop this way. And this comes around here. So see how this lines up right with that? That lines up right about there with a new line coming there. And so this one comes in there. And I am almost done. I think I think I think I'm done shall I turn it over shall I shall I shall I okay so this is what the drawing looks like that was the line drawing I used and there's mine Okay, not bad. His ear's a little weird, a little too high on this side, but it's okay. His face could come out a little more over here. If I did that. See, and then you can adjust it afterwards, but even then it's hard for me to adjust it afterwards because I kind of, I don't, I'm start to think of what it is rather than what it could be, what it's, you know, what I'm looking at. Let's see, and it looked better beforehand. Um, so, yeah, I would go back and go back and stay. Nope, don't do that, Gretchen. Do it upside down. Because this. Then this part. There. There we go. It's a little there. Uh, yeah, isn't it? It's an amazing way to trick your brain. Yeah, yeah. It's a cool way to trick your brain. So that's my little 
fun thing to do. The, the, the point, I mean, the part of it is, yeah, you don't, you can come back and adjust later and what you think looks better and you start to see what things might, might work, but you start to get a sense of that you're looking at shapes and you're looking at, um, shadows the when you do this with negative space um where's the one you can do with negative space let's see so the on some of them hmm i don't know if any of these are really good for negative space you you look at at something and you would um you can turn it upside down too, but then rather than trying to draw the outline of it, what you're going to try to do is you're going to try to just look at the negative space. Uh, around whatever object it is that you want to, 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 you know, to fill in and then how that and it ends up giving you a, a more sense of shape and and way things go like I'm just getting her around the table there and so what I'm trying to do is rather than deal with her features or things like that. I wanted to do negative space and then then you can add some other pieces in but you can start to get the same sense of outline of where her little body would fit in that. So with negative space then you can start to see what goes around and then you can fill in later as you get more comfortable with that type of thing and um negative space usually isn't done upside down i don't think but you rather than focus on the features you you're focusing on the parts or the shadows or the negative you know what what's there and what's not And then her. So it's kind of a fun. You get start to get some a little bit of a, a sense of that. I haven't done very much of this. <clears throat> I think it's it would be a really interesting thing to do with some of my photographs because it would get me to do a lot more. Well, I, I do a lot of looking at what's around my images that I'm photographing anyway. And I, you know, about what is around there and that type of thing. So you could see, and when I print them out in black and white, and then you can also wanted to have, if you had a photo like this and you wanted to try to do it and to make a way to make it a line drawing, you can just go back in and outline it. And um, so you have some outline around that you could work with to do an upside down if you wanted to work on that kind of. Um, upside down shape you're working at and you know so it gives you something to play with I didn't do that very well but <laughs> it gives you something 
Uh, I've got one from my book that is five different glasses, champagne, brandy, snifter, wine glass. I'm drawing them upside down. It's absolutely amazing. Oh my gosh. Ah, oh, of course. Oh yes. Angie, do that. I love that. Um, also, the, the book is by Betty Edwards. It's called Drawing on the Right Side of the Brain. And um, it's an absolutely amazing book that has all this type of things. Goodness gracious, I would love to see you do that. For me, it's an exercise in just, um, it was it was not so much about me being an art, a, a drawing artist, because I as a different kind of artist, it was a, a way to kind of get out of a rut. Like I hadn't done this negative space like this. And it's kind of, I mean, that's kind of a cool thing to do with images like that, you know? I mean, that's a cool little, I, it's just a start of something. I kind of like that. Oh, wow. My goodness. Oh, Angie, I want to see this is, it's invigorating. <laughs> yeah, it is. It gets you going. I'm glad that this invigorated you. In, in, it, 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 it invigorated in I'm looking back there I'm looking at the wrong camera I'm looking over at my camera at my at the comments here and I should be looking at the camera ah, but so I had one last thing and I couldn't leave tonight without this because this was fun this was really fun to do and you guys have um been here with me this is night 40 you've been to almost every one I've had two that I had to record um, and I am just super stoked that um, I've been doing this it um, is been a, a and it will continue to be <coughs> an exercise in <coughs> sorry an exercise in um, persistence and in um, sticking to something. You know, sometimes I give up on things too soon. So this combination between my editing and storytelling and drawing and art and how this all goes together, it's still a work in progress. And you're here for the journey. I yeah let's do 365 <laughs> we may have to have some of those recorded <laughs> I had a time and it premieres and like oh my gosh um but especially if I go to Botswana for 15 days um that will be uh those but I'll record things ahead of time for that and when I come home though they'll be amazing to hang out with elephants yeah and a lot more but for now I wanted to read this book uh, it's a very short little book but it says some things I wish you more it was it belonged to our school but then they decided they didn't need it anymore I wish you more I wish you more ups than downs. Hang on, I'm going to do something. I'm going to... Mm -mm. Ah. That's what I want to do. There we go. Here, let's start again so it's a little closer to the book. I wish you more ups than downs. I wish you more give than take. I wish you more tippy toes than deep. I wish you more we than me. I wish you more hugs than uggs. 
I wish you more woohoo than woe. I wish you more will than hill. I wish you more can than not. <laughs> I wish you more snowflakes than tongue. I wish you more pause than fast forward. I wish you more umbrella than rain. I wish you more bubbles than bath. I wish you more treasures than pockets. I wish you more stories than stars. I wish all of this for you because you are everything I could wish for and more. Blessings, you guys. Go look in the mirror and see the beauty right in front of you. Talk to you tomorrow night and oh, Here's Stella, the grand dog, or babysitting. <laughs> oh, take care, everybody, and have a beautiful, I love it, Uggs and more woohoo than woe. Yes. So good night, Angie. Good night, Gloria. And if you're joining me at another time, thanks for coming in. Hit the like and subscribe if you want to. And... Yeah, a really cute book. This is by Amy Krauss Rosenthal and Tom Lichtenheld. It's a very, very cute book. Really, one. It's one of my grandkids' absolute favorite. They, when, especially when they're little, they really like it because it's just simple text and things that they can completely understand. Ah, oh, good night, you guys. Take care. Catch you tomorrow. Until next time, keep looking. Beauty's everywhere. Yeah.